the top part must specify. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Are you ready? Um, and everyone else has their thing. I should. So I'm just going to check this real quick. Okay. Okay. Because I don't want to get into it to go back. The, okay. key, the princess is in another castle. That was, <laughs> that was funny. That was right. funny. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Alright. Okay. Um, I don't know where you're going to go. It's not going to go well. Okay. Positive, encouraging. All right, so I'm going to talk over this while I play. So, Jake, don't listen. I'm listening to this. Are you listening? Psych, C, gotcha. You said put your pants back on. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. All right, what's up, guys? I'm QWERTYD93, and we are here with a Pokemon VGC battle. Today is Christmas, and I got my capture card. So things are going to look a little bit different than on my TCG part of the channel. Uh, we're going to just have a friendly VGC 14 match with my brother. His name is not Tyrone, it's Jake. And uh, you can see some gimmicks on his team. We see the Gardevoir, the Kangaskhan. Venusaur, Mamoswine, Lantern, and Manetric. Lantern and Manetric being a relatively um, notorious combo with the Discharge Volt Absorb. Um, but either way, I think my leads are going to be pretty set. My, my screen, my choices of my team are going to be off screen. Um, I have Crobat, Rotom Heat, Sylveon, um, Scizor, Kangaskhan as well, and then Hydreigon. So I'm going to make my selections while Jake makes his. And I believe... Yeah. All right. So we're both ready, and we're getting the bell. Okay. A little bit of lag. These older games are kind of slower. See the battle starting? As, in fact, Jake does decide to lead with the Lantern Manetric. Lantern probably holding the Choice Scarf item, going after the Soak. And Manetric uh, will probably Mega Evolve to get off that Intimidate. So, I will play accordingly. You will not be able to see my moves, and because Jake is in the same room, I will not necessarily be able to say them out loud. Uh, but you will see them just as this match progresses. We see uh, Mega Evolve... Mega Evolution coming off of that Manetric. Uh, gaining the Intimidate ability, which is going to lower the attack of my Crobat and Kangaskhan. Crobat, not ever going to use its physical attack, does not matter. And my Kangaskhan is going to Mega Evolve as well. We could see Protect off of Manetric, uh, maybe possibly even a more aggressive just Discharge, but there's the Protect. So this turn is going to play out exactly how I hoped as I'm going to get a fake, off, fake out off on that uh, lantern. It's going to flinch it, so we won't have the option of moving this turn. Uh, that Intimidate is definitely cutting down my attack, but I do get the Tailwind off, which is going to double my speed and allow me to outspeed everything. Um, and the lantern flinches and is un unable to move this turn. So this is playing out really well. And we'll see how Jake adjusts. See my Bruce Wayne and Kant even, some of the clever nicknames I came up with. As he actually withdraws the Manetric. And he brings out uh, that Gardevoir, which I believe is a choice spec set. Uh, I'm going to taunt that Lantern so that it is unable to uh, use any soak shenanigans. And we actually see the Gardevoir live the double edge, which I'm quite surprised. I'm Tinway really putting it work as the soak does nothing. So pretty good turn on my part. And yeah, this is going pretty well in my match so in my favor so far. This match I, I've kept a lot of the momentum. And that first turn fake out predict was uh, very good on my part, leaving my opponent with very few options as he does opt to switch out. Um, good plan, Jake's part, as uh, the Minesh is going to intimidate my Kangaskhan once again. 
basically rendering it almost useless. Uh, these two intimidates are going to count the same towards my negative attack as a burn would. So hopefully I actually do pick off this guard wars. It does live the first sucker punch, but Kangaskhan is so strong uh, taking out the second time. As the super fang comes out for my crowbat, cutting that Manetrix attack in half. So, still relatively good in my favor. Um, I, I do carry a lot of momentum here, however, uh, my Tailwind is going to end relatively soon, and my Kangaskhan is very weak right now. So, we could see a pretty big turnaround from Jake's side, but uh, you never really know. So, I believe, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this. Alright. So, I'm going to make a switch here. Uh, try to preserve that King's Con for later. Uh, take off that Intimidate reduction as I bring in my Hydreigon. And I'm going to top that Lantern once again. Uh, he could Ice Beam or Hydro Pump, which could be really obnoxious. Um, but he's going to heal it up with the Discharge. As we see... Alright, doing doing a pretty decent amount to my Crobat. It is super effective and does get the Paralysis. Oh no. That was... Oh, double Paralysis. That was so unfortunate. Alright. Okay, this is... Th this game just went from very, very highly in my favor to really, really bad. Uh, this Manectric is going to be able to pick up the knockout of my Crobat. Um, and being at a quarter speed, I will not be able to set up another Tailwind. The only thing good about this is that I did was able to taunt the lantern. Um, so, uh, okay. Well, now I'm in a really weird position, um, but I believe I know what I have to do to win this game. I, I am I am up. I, it is four to three, but the discharge does connect, so I believe he's going to tie this game up. Yeah, that Minetrix lightning type attacks just. You know, pick off that Crobat, that makes sense. As we see the Ice Beam come out of Lantern, uh, Choice Scarf isn't necessarily going to matter, but unfortunately we do see that do enough damage to where that we'll be able to pick up the Knockout next turn. Uh, I'm going to drop my opponent's Mega. I think that was the important play here, as that Lantern won't be able to do enough damage, and it is locked into a move now, so I know exactly what it's going to do. We see a Mammoth Swine come in, that thing scares me. Mamoswine is a very strong Pokemon. It's really underrated. Um, it gets priority in Ice Shard, and this game is... It's going to be a really complicated finish. Um, but... I think I'm going to go with this. Alright. We're going to see how this works. We don't see Protect from Mamoswine. That's what I was hoping for as I'm going to fake out the Lantern, which will prevent it from moving. So you see the flinch. We see the Icicle Crash come out of Mana Swine. Who does he target? Oh, no. Okay. As he drops my Hydreigon, the Icicle Crash does connect. So this could definitely be a game in my opponent's favor. Uh, the Taunt wears off, but it is Choice Locked. So not a huge issue anymore. Okay. Um... I believe. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we're we're gonna do this. All right, let's let's see what my opponent decides to do. We know that the lantern is choice scarf locked into ice beam. Uh, not gonna be super effective on anything, but it does move first. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see the ice cycle crash. No ice shard, as there's no reason for my opponent to do that onto my Rotom Heat. Not super effective damage, so it's actually not going to do that much. I'm going to get a low kick off, and wow, that did a lot more damage than I thought it would. All right, so uh, the low kick is going to be able to connect with that Mammoth Swine and knock it out. And I believe that wraps up the game for me, as my opponent has nothing left in the back. My Will-O-Wisp will connect with that Lantern and start burning it for residual damage. I can't use any Electric-type attacks, because even though they would be the most effective, rather than Fire-type moves... Um, that Volt Absorb is just going to heal it up. So, Unfortunately for my opponent, unless he gets a freeze here, I believe that wraps it up for me. As, yeah, he just forfeits the game. So, good game, Jake. Uh, that was fun. And stay tuned, guys, as I get the hang of more VGC matches. And we'll be back soon.